Hello everyone. Um, today I'm going to talk about theoretical physics. I'm going to talk about my work in binary relativity and quantum mechanical relativity. And I'm going to talk about standard, the special and general theories of relativity. And um, I just want to explain that when I was originally working on this, um, I observed that when you wash, well, I was at my old job washing dishes. What I observed is that when water goes down the drain, it spirals in towards the drain and it rotates as it spirals down into the drain. So what I realized was that there was missing gravi gravity to define this and the water rotating down the drain was a pure reflection of Earth's gravity. Just a basic observation I realized there was missing gravity in the universe. And eventually I would tie this into black holes and other factors in the universe. Um, so, you know, originally I did many thought experiments to relate it all to black holes and gravitational energies in the universe. And it's all originally derived from E equals mc squared. And what I did was I redefined Einstein's most famous equation, E equals mc squared, into an explosionary energy. So if you think about E equals mc squared in terms of a star exploding, there's matter and light going outward in all directions, three-dimensional explosion. So the three dimensions being mass times the speed of light times the speed of light. So all E equals mc squared means from a visual and logical standpoint is that matter and light are going outward in all directions. And this is a pure energy when a star explodes or in you know nuclear explosions and other physical explosions. And um, so that's a big thing for E equals mc squared, just for the average person to understand it. If you picture a star exploding, that's what you get. Matter and light outward in all directions. Now the, the full mathematical portion of the equation is E equals mc squared is divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. Now the v is velocity, so this incorporates a full range of moving objects also with energies. It's like the star explodes in a certain direction in this case. But the main thing here is the 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. This mathematically shows that using explosions one can never reach the speed of light. Which is a big problem because eventually if we want to go to the stars we want to go at least the speed of light. Because stars are you know light years away and, and much further. So that's E equals mc squared from a visual and logical standpoint. I won't get into the mathematics too much. Now what I realized is that this equation lacks a certain symmetry and that symmetry having to do with gravitational energies and black holes. So what I discovered was a symmetrical equation after many thought experiments because I've been working on this for years and many other new ideas in theoretical physics. So basically a gravitational energy is opposite to an uh, regular energy to e equals mc squared. And it's gravitational energy equals mass times the speed of rotation squared. So if you look at it from a visual standpoint, um, a star imploding inward in all directions would create a gravitational energy equal to mass times the speed of rotation squared. So that's, you know, that ties back into the water going down the drain and the black holes out in the universe and galaxies and a lot of other stuff really. But um, for the mathematics, um, black holes can absorb light and operate faster than light within a certain distance. Now mathematically, that gets shown in the bottom portion of the equation, again symmetrical to E equals mc squared. But this time, mass times the speed of rotation squared is divided by the square root of 1 plus v squared divided by c squared. Now all this means from a logical standpoint is that a black hole can operate faster than light within a certain certain uh, volume inside the event horizon mostly and you know a certain distance probably around it too. Now that just explains it from a visual standpoint. The mathematics ties into a lot of other things. So that's gravitational energy. Just using pure symmetry and logic, I uh, discovered a symmetrical equation to explain black holes in the universe. Now if you imagine a spiral galaxy rotating down to the black hole, it's similar to water going down the drain. 
which ties in again to gravitational energies. Now, you know, this is reflected throughout nature because there's two opposite energies in two states, two opposite states, but they're both still energies. Similar to, if you think about humans, they're in two opposite states, male and female, but they're both still human. And these are both still energies in two opposite states. Now, also reflected throughout nature, because we're trying to describe nature, there's a few state of material. And if you think about like electrons versus uh, protons, there's two opposites, and then there's there's a neutral state, which are neutrons fused together, both positives and negatives, to balance it out. And similarly, I found a fusionary energy that ties into both of these, and it's a quantum mechanical relativity. The gravitational energy is binary relativity dealing with um, black holes and everything. So, a fusionary energy deals with stars, fusionary environments, and uh, basically it's just fusionary energy equals mass times the speed of light squared plus or minus MSR squared. Now the plus or minus makes it a quantum mechanical because it's in two states in one energy. And um, I'll explain that in a later video, the plus or minus for fusionary energies. And the bottom portion of the equation, similar to uh, the other two energy equations, fusionary energy equals mass times the speed of light plus or minus mass times the speed of rotation squared divided by the square root of V squared divided by C squared. Now in this energy there's no one plus or one minus because light energies and fusionary energies can reach the speed of light. So this mathematically shows it in that portion of the equation. So, you know, this is a big deal because if we want to make fusionary engines we want to be eventually go the speed of light or, you know, as close to it as possible, if not faster. And so these energies will help us to eventually understand fusionary en energy environments and stars and eventually be able to recreate them on Earth so we can have vast amounts of energy and that will be a very big step for mathematical physics and practical theoretical physics. And that's the three energies. Now the quantum mechanical part I'll explain in another video. It's plus or minus depending on the state of the star based on evolution of stars it's plus or minus, or in certain stars it's both states in one, plus and or minus. And that gets a little tricky. I'll talk about that next time with binary relativity and quantum mechanical relativity time. And so again, just mirrored throughout nature, there's two opposite states equals mc squared is one opposite state. Gravitational energy equals msr squared, mass times the speed of rotation squared, is opposite to equals mc squared. And fusionary energy is a fused state. So this is reflected throughout nature, whether you're dealing with electrons, protons, and neutrons, and is needed in mathematical unification in theoretical physics. Einstein was working on this towards the latter part of the light and or, or the latter part of his life, and I think I found it. So I've been working on this for a long time, and next time I'll explain fusionary energies and um, I'll explain the energies a little better. All right. Sign enough. Remember, explore your world, explore your universe, explore yourself. Thanks. Bye.